I want to ask a hypothetical question in this video. Say Man United did sign Jadon Sancho this summer. Because of complications with the coronavirus, he's the only signing we make and therefore we hold on to the players we've got in this squad. What would our best 11 look like going into next season? It's a bit of a fun video, but I want to run through that hypothetical best 11, explain my choice for every position and why, and I want to hear from you in the comments where you think the strengths and the weaknesses still lie in this team that would definitely be significantly improved if Jaden Sancho joins. Make sure you subscribe down below if you're new, but let's get straight into this one. Quickly before I do begin, I want to thank The Athletic again for sponsoring this video. It's really helping United People's TV through this quarantine period. If you haven't already gone over there, follow, listen to David Ornstein's podcast with Mark Chapman. You've got Laurie Whitwell, who's the chief United writer. If Jaden Sancho news breaks, it's going to be coming on The Athletic probably first and probably from David Ornstein. So make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already, there's a seven-day free trial you can get with United People's TV. There's a link in the description and that link also gives you 50% off the annual sub. Right now, it's a great place to listen to the podcast. They're really interesting and insightful. Even if there isn't that much news to talk about, it's always good to hear about football. So make sure you follow the link in the description. But let's take a look at what this hypothetical team could be with Jadon Sancho in. Now, of course, it starts in goal and it starts with David De Gea. Now, could Dean Henderson come in and replace De Gea in the future? I think that could definitely happen. I don't really see it happening next season. I'm not sure what's going to happen with Henderson. He's been blindingly good at Sheffield United. But I'm hoping that the prospect of Henderson coming and taking De Gea's number one spot is going to light a fire underneath him and get his best form back. Now, we're not going to need to rely on De Gea as much as we did, say, under Mourinho and Van Gaal, because our defence is significantly better. But we need De Gea for those moments to be on his best form. So De Gea's in my team. What do you think about him and his prospects over the next couple of years at United? Now, at left back, I'd say there's a question. I've gone for Luke Shaw. I'm not sure whether I would be confident enough to rely on Brandon Williams week in, week out, every single week. I think the idea of Shaw and Williams sharing responsibilities over competitions is probably going to be the best option next year. And whoever proves himself properly will get that number one spot. Maybe it's too little too late for Luke Shaw. Maybe now is the time to throw Brandon Williams in and give him that number one spot at left back. Let me know what you think about that. But for the time being, I've got Shaw. And I think Shaw sort of improved as the season went on before the coronavirus hit. But Brandon Williams is certainly doing very well as well. Centre-backs, I've got Maguire and Bay. Now, Maguire, I've enjoyed watching him progress as a player at United. I think he was nervous at the start, but he's come out of his shell. And I think he's crucially important at the heart of defence. And I think the biggest question mark about the whole defence is who partners Harry Maguire? You've got Victor Lindelof, you've got Eric Bay, And prior to his injury, he had Axel Tuanzeva, who was a genuine option. Now, I've gone for Eric Bay, who I think out of the three is the best defender when he's not injured. Unfortunately for Bay, he's injured a lot. So I could see that being an issue, but if we're looking at best 11, I'm probably going to put Bay to partner Maguire. I think they counterbalance each other very well, and that's why I've gone for him. But who would you put? Let me know in the comments. And obviously I'm going wan Bissaka at right back. He has more than proven he is worth that 50 million we paid for him. Massively improving going forward on the right flank, and I think Jadon Sancho being on the right wing is going to help him so much more in terms of having an option, someone to actually one-two with and actually play with down the right flank. But defensively, he's going to have to be very solid in this formation, which has only got one defensive midfielder in order to allow two more attack-minded central midfielders in front of him. And for that defensive midfielder, I've gone for Scott McTominay. And if I'm being completely honest, I see this being the biggest weakness in the squad, in this formation, if we only sign Jadon Sancho. Now, Scott McTominay, I love him, you love him. He's been phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal player this season so far. The amount of progression has been sensational. Mourinho is clearly right about McTominay. But in this formation, with two more attack-minded central midfielders, whoever that defensive midfielder is, effectively has to be Sergio Busquets, maybe with a little, not as much flair going forward in his passing range, but somebody who's capable of marshalling that whole defensive midfield position on his own in order to allow those two attack Mardi midfielders, which you'll probably know who I'm going to say in these roles. But that's why I say it's probably the weakest point. It's a lot of pressure to put on McTominay's shoulders. You could put Nemanja Matic in there, and clearly he's proven himself as a pure defensive midfielder since Bruno Fernandes arrived. It's got more out of Matic, but again, I wouldn't want to put Matic in there. It's, it's too 
leggier position. You need someone who's fit and energetic who can do a lot of running, and that is not Nemanja Matic. So in an ideal world, you'd probably sign a defence-minded midfielder. Would you put Fred there? I think he's probably not defensively minded enough. I think he's far too concentrated and he's better going forward than he is going back. So Matomane would be my defensive midfielder in this formation, but I would have concerns over his ability to marshal that role all season long and get him injured, like we did this year, causes problems. It's definitely a weak point in the squad. Now for the two attack minded midfielders in front of him, of course I've gone for Bruno Fernandes. I'm going to put him as a right central midfielder so he can link up closely with Jaden Sancho, who's obviously going in the right wing. Bruno Fernandes, I think the midfield has to be geared to getting the most out of Bruno Fernandes, allowing him to play and express himself as best he can. Now, Bruno is he's shown he's got great defensive qualities, tracking back, so he'll help cover the space with McTominay. And when you've got someone like Paul Pogba alongside him, who typically doesn't cover ground in the same way that McTominay or Bruno Fernandes does, Bruno's certainly got to work hard. Now, I think it's unfair of me to put Popper in this team ahead of Fred, but the reality is on paper, straight away, Popper goes back into any starting eleven at Manchester United. The reality is that Fred had a sensational season and it's very unfair to drop him from this team. But you can't not have Popper in if we're going to keep him in this hypothetical team and we don't sell him in the summer. You put him in your starting eleven. It does mean that we've actually got strength in depth in there. We've got Fred, you can drop in and out for Paul Pogba. It's not, we don't have much strength in depth anywhere, really, across the pitch. So the idea that you could play Fred or Pogba is a bit of a luxury for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer if it was to happen. But that would be my midfield three. Montomane sitting at the base of a midfield three behind Pogba and Fernandes and allowing those two to really concentrate on going forward but also relying on Fernandes to cover the space in behind as well, and wan to really do his job at right back. Now, onto the front three, and this is obviously where Jadon Sancho comes in, and it's such a huge weakness in this squad that has been there for so long on the right wing. We've had no right winger for, yeah, I can't remember the last right wing we had. Ronaldo, who since then? Valencia, yeah, he was good up until a point, but in terms of the real flair and the quality and the overall world-class ability, we haven't had a player like Jadon Sancho there for a long time. And it's going to transform our attack because we won't just be relying on going down the left and sometimes going down the middle. We'll have a goal threat, direct goal threat from the right-hand side. And Jadon Sancho will completely transform the shape of our attack. As I said, I think wan Saka will be better because... Sancho is there and someone who can link up with him. But Sancho just transforms the whole attack. Bruno will get better because Sancho's everybody will. That's how important a signing I think he is. And arguably, it's the biggest weakness in this squad is right wing. Now, on left wing, it's obviously Marcus Rashford. There's one thing we have to all agree on now is that Marcus Rashford is a left winger. He's not a striker. He is a left winger. That's where you get the most out of Rashford. It allows him to run at defenders with pace. Rashford is fantastic on the left-hand side. And having Rashford on the left and Sancho on the right, that's a huge goal threat from both sides directly. So you wouldn't be relying just on the number nine, on the main striker to score goals. You'd have Rashford, you'd have Pogba, you'd have Fernandes, you'd have Sancho. Goal threats galore. And that would be a dangerous attack spearheaded in this formation, in this team by Anthony Martial, who on form slots into that front five incredibly and it will be such a fluid team threats from everywhere movement from everybody it will be a great attacking team to watch when he's not on form you'd still have as i said rashford sancho Pogba, and fernandez to help because you wouldn't just be relying on your main man up front to get your goals you'd have goal threats everywhere and if you look at that team and that front five you got, look rashford martial sancho Pogba, and fernandez going forward in attack Wow, well, <laughs> very nice. That really would be sensational. It does put a lot of responsibility, as I said, on Scott McTominay to marshal the midfield. And maybe this is a way to attack minded team. But I want to know from you in the comments what you think about it. For me, it looks, I wouldn't say balanced. I think Bruno Fernandes' defensive ability adds more balance in that midfield than, say, if Fred and Popper played there. But it's still clearly attack minded. But when you bring someone like Jaden Sancho in, you don't bring him in to come into a defensive-minded formation. And a format, just hit, and you don't. You just don't. So I want to know from you in the comments, this is my hypothetical 11. If we sign Jaden Sancho this summer 
and we don't sign anybody else and therefore we hold on to the players we've got in this squad, what would our best team be? What will our best formation be? What would the best style be? And where are the weaknesses in this team? Let me know what you think in the comments below. It's a bit of a fun video. It's an interesting, I was talking to Yvonne, the co-editor of the People's Person website, and we were just having a bit of a debate, so this is why the videos come out. If you did enjoy it, please drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Until next time though, take it easy.